Welcome to the latest episode of the Edgar Rice Burroughs mini podcast. Uh, these short podcasts are meant to supplement the full length episodes that I do a lot with Scott Stewart and Jess Terrell, in which we generally discuss one of Burroughs' novels in detail. The mini podcasts right now are being used to do a chapter by chapter analysis of the 1912 novel Tarzan of the Apes. My name is Tim DeForest. I'm the author of several books on what I call pre digital pop, pop culture. Uh, things like Old Time Radio and Pulp Magazines, and I keep a blog about such things at Comics, Old Time Radio, and other cool stuff. Now, right now we're talking about Chapter 27, titled The Giant Again. Now, please note that I will be including spoilers both for this novel and for later novels in the series occasionally. And I would recommend that you reread this particular chapter before listening to the podcast, as I will be assuming that you are familiar with its events as I discuss them. Now we're coming up to the uh, the end run here. This is the next to last chapter, and the action here moves to the United States for both this chapter and the last one. But Tarzan gets one last opportunity to flex his hero muscles as he rescues Jane from a forest fire. We also get some clarification about Professor Porter's financial situation because the treasure is presumably lost because uh, which, you know, which is dire because the treasure that he had found is presumably now lost. He borrowed money from Robert Candler, who's frankly a jerk, but is now using that debt to pressure Jane into marrying him. She knows that Candler hoped for the professor's financial ruin in order to effectively buy her, and the scene in which she doesn't hold back and lets him know that she knows what he did is great. It's clear from Candler's reaction to this that he doesn't care at all for Jane's feelings. He just wants to own her. Candler is only briefly in the novel and is so petty that uh, so pretty much one dimensional he's pretty much a one dimensional villain and he's an effective one though and we do really enjoy seeing him get his tarzan fueled come up it's in the next chapter now angela and i had quite a long discussion about the porter family how the porter family defines honor i don't think professor i don't think that burroughs intended to make professor porter look bad but to modern sensibilities it does seem like he's essentially selling his daughter to prevent financial embarrassment. We talked a bit on whether in real life in 1912, either the honor of a proud Southern family or a sense of personal honor left over from the recently ended Victorian age would have forced Jane to keep her coerced promise to Mary Candler even after Tarzan shows up with the money from the sale of the treasure. We have our doubts, both Angela and I, about whether this would be the case. But in the world that Edgar Rice Burroughs creates, this is indeed the code of honor that the porters must follow. It does work in terms of the story. And Jane comes out looking pretty good in this exchange of dialogue with Cecil. I do not love him, meaning Scandler, she said almost proudly. Is it because of money, Jane? She nodded. Then am I so much less desirable than Candler? I have money enough and far more for every need, he said bitterly. I do not love you, Cecil, he said, she said, but I do respect you. If I, must if I must disgrace myself by such a bargain with any man, I prefer that it be one I already despise. I should loathe the man to whom I sold myself without love, whomever he might be. You will be happier, she concluded, alone, with my respect and friendship, than with me and my contempt. No matter whether we relate to the code of honor being followed in this chapter, Jane's emotional maturity and kindness here is epic. And her reaction to Tarzan after he rescues her from the fire is perfectly understandable. Now that she's back in civilization, it's perfectly believable for her to question whether what she feels for Tarzan is romantic love rather than just something that happened in the heat of the moment while in the jungle. Tarzan certainly is not the average suitor and a relationship with him is bound to be a scary thing. And also on a minor note, it's really kind of cool to have Tarzan driving a car. Well, that's it for this time. Once again, my name is Tim DeForest. Uh, please visit my blog at Comics, Old Time Radio, and other cool stuff. Um, please, um, uh, um, sorry, uh, keep an ear out for future episodes of this podcast. And we do appreciate your listening. Uh, if you're enjoying what we're doing here, we would also appreciate it if you take a moment to leave a review on iTunes. But in either case, just thank you for listening.